Welcome guys, it's time for another Eternal video series here on my channel. After we had our first draft last time, it's time for another constructed deck tech. Today I'm gonna talk about a sweet new deck that I started playing a while ago. Um, after experimenting a bit with a couple of decks and just clearing daily quests during the holidays and stuff, I dropped to almost uh, out of top 100. I think I was like 99 at the lowest from the 16th place that I was last time in the video. But um, the deck that got me back up <coughs> is this sweet baby. Some of you might know it as Stone Scar Callus or something. I just don't really like the name and I think Callus is only one of the things going on in the deck. So I duped it Scrap Metal, which I feel is kind of fitting given that the deck um, especially revolves around uh, grenade, in drone, uh, grenade in tokens, which are metal and kind of like throwing them away in various ways, basically turning them into scrap metal. So I felt that's kind of a sweet name for the deck. There is some versions of this out there. I played against uh, this a few times, which is part of what inspired me to uh, build and work on the deck. Um, but yeah, I think there's no like established version yet and lists that I've uh, faced played suboptimal stuff. So I decided to uh, start building my own and tune it. So let's go over the deck list. First we have Combust. That's kind of the go-to removal for the deck. Sure, sacrificing a unit might seem like a lot, but in this deck it really doesn't matter that much. We have half a grenade in drone to sec. We can um, pop our uh, slumbering stone and wake it up. We can throw away our dark wisp to uh, cycle it and stuff. So there's plenty of things going on. I just use an assembly line token. So half the time the sacrifice effect is even beneficial and it gets even better if you throw in a madness into the mix. Um, but we'll get to that later. But yeah, the big upside is that it only costs one power and that it is pretty much non-discriminatory, killing anything that doesn't have an Aegis on it that we want to kill. Since there is um, a bunch of um, good multi-faction units that cards like Annihilate, for example, don't cover and also Annihilate costs twice the power. So um, yeah, I think four is probably the right number. I've seen lists with three and there is a small chance that the fours might be too many, but usually I've been pretty happy with the card. There were cases where I could see shaving the third for another removal, but um, currently I'm not convinced that that's the right move just because of how flexible and tempo efficient the card is. And uh, being efficient with your power is all that matters, especially when you're dead dirtily. Um, next we have Grenade and Drone, part of the heart of the deck. One of the best uh, unit producers for all our sex energies. One power for two bodies is a great raid. Also a solid card to get back with Smuggler Stash later in the game if you just need some more bodies to power up your Callus, for example. Um, next we have Slumbering Stone, another solid sec enabler for all the stuff that we uh, need sec fodder for, like Combust, Devourer, or simply Callus. And the other nice thing is that it gives us a 2-2 flyer um, when we play Callus, so we have a blocker to protect the Callus some and also a nice attacker because a 2 2 flyer actually can usually attack for 2 a turn um, and apply some pressure, especially if the opponent usually only has like one Titan or one flyer that the Callus will take down immediately. So the evasion is pretty good here. And yeah, it's also an early jump blocker if you need to preserve some life total and want to just pop out the, uh, uh, the gargoyle occasionally. Um, Torch is just great removal, finisher, weapon killer, unit killer, does it all. Probably, like I said last time, the best fire card in the game, uh, the best uh, fire card in the game and one of the best cards in the game entirely. Next we have to annihilate. Um, I just wanted some more removal and Annihilate is a pretty efficient removal. The fact that it's a fast spell definitely matters against ambush units trying to ambush our Callus 
and stuff like that. And it's also very efficient at killing stuff like Titan, for example, which costs twice the power and stuff like that. Big non-Champion of Glory Rakano units and so on and so forth. Or, for example, chargers like um, Soulfire Drake. It's just a good card to have. I could even see running a third potentially, but there are some decks where it's not that great. Like against Combray, it doesn't kill Seraph, for example. Against Blue Black, like um, Feln, it doesn't kill any of the units basically. So even the control and the mid rangey ones run enough units that. Um, it kind of matters that you want to kill their uh, their two fives and harbingers and stuff. So yeah, not sure if I want a third. For now, two is fine. <coughs> um, next, we have another sack fodder, dark dark wisp, just a solid guy to block some early units like uh, Oni Ronin, for example and to enable our early sack stuff and smooth out our draws, hit our power drops and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mentioned Devour already. Just another card that helps the deck uh, smooth out draws and find the cards that it needs. And also Synergy with Madness, for example, to steal an opposing guy and then sack it to draw two cards on turn 5 or later. Or uh, turn on a Slumbering uh, Stone or just cycle our Dark Wisp to draw three cards and dig into our deck to find answers. Uh, next we have Varus Favor, that's basically a spell land, spell power in this deck, since 29-ish um, seems to be a good number of power for this deck so far, and you usually have the time, and thanks to the redraw effect, also the power to always be able to cast this usually, unless you have the rare draw where your hand is all fire sigils. And yeah, the one damage does a lot. There's plenty of things it can kill. It pops Aegis so we can combust our madness things and stuff like that. It finishes off some weapons and so on and so forth. Just a really good um, yeah, power card that adds some nice utility to the deck on top of being a power. Um, assembly line, the second best uh, unit producer in the deck after Grenade and Drone. Um, we get one more body but have to pay three times the power cost, so it's a worse rate, but still three bodies for one card is really good. Then we have Kallus, one of the core cards of the deck. Um, usually you want to just slam this with a bunch of units in play, um, preferably set it up by removing as many units as you can from the opponent's board, and then basically just kill their last unit and have like a medium-sized callus up on an empty board and they have to play multiple units into your callus until they can finally manage to uh, establish a board again. This swings the game hugely. And yeah, remember, uh, like imagine an 8-8 callus that you get back with a smuggler's dash later on that usually beats most decks. If you get back like an 8-8 callus, a grenade and drone and like a slumbering stone, then you end up with a 14-14 Kallus and a 2-2 Flyer in play. Not a lot of people can beat that in the mid to late game when they're almost out of resources. And no control deck basically can beat a 14-14 weapon because there's no main deck weapon removal. Um, yeah, Madness has been really impressive and a card that I haven't seen in other versions. It's just really great. On turn 4 you can go Madness Combust to kill the two best units of the opponent and deal them some damage. I've won plenty of games by just madnessing the opponent's last big blocker or like an exhausted big attacker that attacked me the last turn and then just swing for lethal or you can combo this with Kallus on turn 6 to just steal something, hit, then Kallus kill their last unit for example with the Kallus afterwards. Um, you can also combo it like I said with Devour to just draw cards and have it be like a 2 card 5 mana removal that deals some damage to the opponent, draws you two cards and gains you two life, which is a really great deal. There could easily be a third one here. I'm not entirely sure what I would cut for the third. And I think three is the maximum because sometimes when you're especially when you're behind, having this without a way to enable it or the things you have to enable it 
are too expensive and slow and you're lacking the power drops yet to get there can be really lackluster but when it's good it's great it's like incredibly powerful um, very impressive card in my opinion a must play in the deck makes the deck so much more flexible and powerful and also helps a lot with winning games ending games next we have the other uh, key win condition basically in the deck uh, other than Callus, it's Torrent of Spiders. Like most unit decks can never beat like a big Torrent of Spiders, like four or five Death Touch units. Um, there's not that many flyers in the in the game. The few flyers that uh, exist can usually be dealt with with Torch and removal and other removal, or just Callus. So yeah, having a bunch of Death Touch uh, Spiders trades with like the entire opposing board and is also a really nice way of uh, finishing off control decks because they need a sweeper to deal with the, those. Their removal is really bad against the entire deck here. So that's a great win condition against control decks as well. Um, most decks cannot recover uh, from the second torrent of spiders. Like The first one sometimes is beatable, but the second one usually is like five, six spiders and beats almost anyone. It's just one of the cards that makes a deck possible. Next we have a bit of a ringer here, uh, Rebel Illuminator. Um, another solid guy, three attack trades with a bunch of stuff, gives you extra torches to combo with your other torches or just trade with a guy in combat, torch the other guy. Um, it's a solid card to get back with Smuggler Stash. This could also potentially be um, Recogulator. I played him uh, a while. I think this should be slightly better. Recogulator is a bit more underwhelming but has the upside of setting up two blockers um, post Callus when you Callus with a Recogulator in play and creates more bodies for Torrent of Spiders which is nice and has two health so it doesn't die to like Varus Favor and one power units which can matter but this is all in all hits harder uh, gets you a more impactful card a lot of the time, like a torch is a more impactful card than a Grenadian drone. But yeah, um, I can't fault you for uh, preferring Recogulator. I am a bit undecided yet on that slot, or if um, there's like need for additional 4 drops in general. I mean, maybe this should be like a shirt, statuary maiden, and like a madness or something like that, or just like a madness and a removal, not sure. But you need a certain amount of units for your torrents and callus and stuff to work, so um, that's why it's there. And it's kind of like a removal and a body all at once. Next we have Statuary Maiden. Um, basically, uh, what I had before, in place of the two Illuminators and the two Maidens, was for Reapers. Uh, Reaper was okay and did a solid job of finishing people and was nice to get back with Stash. But the problem is, it's very bad once it gets silenced, because then it's just a 5-1 that trades with literally anything. Um, and there's a lot of throwaway units with 1 or 2 attack that happily trade with a 5-1. Plus it's the only target in the entire deck for Vanquish, thanks to um, Florian Koch, aka uh, Odin FK. Uh, raising that question, like we talked about the deck a bit and he was like, yeah, what's about what's up with those Reapers, like are they really necessary, they seem a bit out of place, deck has no 4 drops, um, only target for Vanquish and stuff, and I was like, wait, you make a good point there, I never like thought about it like that, and that's when I decided to cut the Reapers and uh, came up with the idea that Statue Maiden, while pretty great against the deck, is also actually pretty great in the deck and also gives you an advantage in the mirror, because um, it's a nice win condition, like we have a lot of ways to kill enemy units, so um, we can create quite a bunch of cudgels, especially with our death touchers blocking and attacking and stuff and removal spells. Um, and yeah, 2-4 deadly is a pretty solid blocker for health, survives a lot of things, and the deadly makes sure that everything that, it, that doesn't kill the maiden gets killed by the maiden still. Um, and yeah, you can put the cudgels on random tokens, and if they have a Vanquish stranded in their hand, whatever, they can 
uh, vanquish like a 5-5 five, five grenade in, I don't mind. Just be careful to try and avoid uh, putting cudgels on your maiden against uh, justice decks if you can because of uh, vanquish. So just try and put it on other units and let the maiden be 2-4 deadly. So they need a silence to take uh, care of her. And yeah, it's another solid unit to get back with stash. Cudgel also provides extra uh, weapons to get back with stash. So if you lose like a cudgel and a callus, suddenly you get back two weapons and two units with stash, which often is kind of hard. A lot of the time stash only gets you back three cards. Unless you got that second callus in hand and also managed to put it in a graveyard. Uh, so uh, in the void, sorry. Um, so yeah, um, this is pretty good. Not sure what the perfect number is. Like I said, um, could easily be that the deck won three or even all four, but not sure about all four just because the card on its own doesn't do a whole lot. It's just like a four power, two, four deadly. That's kind of lying around. It's, it needs removal spells to generate cudgels to get you some value. And if it just like lies around, the opponent will eventually find the silence or removal to get rid of it and then it's just like a one for one trade. So um, yeah having drawing too many of these could be awkward and that's why I have that split because this card is like always a two for one unless they have a silence. Um, while Statue Maiden is a lot easier to be one for one and also pressures less against control. Like against control Statue Maiden for example is a lot worse than Rebel Illuminator for example, or recogulator. But yeah, two is definitely a good number. Could easily be three, or depending on the metagame, even four. For now, I actually only own two, and I'm also happy with only playing two, because I want to see how it goes and like try the split of the other things. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a card that already pulled its weight. I'm happy with the addition, addition and I would at least play the two that I'm currently playing. It's been pretty good. And last but not least, we have the, um, yeah, game breaker basically, the Ender Smuggler Stash. In like slower games, usually at some point you will cast a stash on like a callus that's somewhere between four and eight. Get that back. Get back two other uh, units, maybe even a, a powerful unit that you stole and killed with madness which is something to keep in mind, because Madness, if you steal something with Madness and kill it, it goes to your Void, and you can get it back with Stash. Like, I've I've had a game against Combray earlier, where I just got back, like, a like a Seraph, a Sandstorm Titan, I think, a Cudgel, and, like, a 8-8 eight, eight Callus. You can imagine that my Combray opponent did not win that game, especially because I already had, like, 9 power, so I was also capable of activating zero after turn after and stuff which didn't even happen because the opponent just died beforehand but yeah that's another nice upside of madness it kind of indirectly makes stash more powerful and get more powerful units and getting back big calluses on a board of a bunch of tokens like imagine eight power you stash for like an eight eight callus have a bunch of units in play then you play that callus and it's like 16 16 i think the biggest i've played so far was like a 20 20 callus and one shot my opponent on an empty board it's pretty uh, impressive and even if you don't have units like getting back an 8 8 callus and just playing it without sacrificing uh, any more units is a lot of the time really powerful i mean imagine sort of the sky king is an 8-8 eight, eight weapon and it costs 8 power and is a legendary. So getting that back for 3 power is still like an incredibly powerful deal. <laughs> so yeah, and the rest is just 25 power. Um, there's no reason not to play Diplomatic Seal if there is no influence affinity. Sure, it makes your Seed of Chaos occasionally a bit worse, but I rather have my Seed of Chaos come into play depleted a couple of times, then uh, be screwed out of one color. This makes sure you can always play the one drop you have, no matter which one of the two it is, and the color requirements later in the game are so low that basically everything costs one, 
one red or one purple. So um, the only problem would be uh, opening hand or early game uh, influence crew and seal is perfect there. Like if you have a seal and a sigil, you're guaranteed to be capable of casting all your uh, casting playing all your uh, cards given that you have enough power in total um, which is a huge gain in consistency I consist constantly see people playing these uh, these decks that run zero diplomatic seal and there and looking at the deck list there's zero reason to not jam for diplomatic seal in there because um, the only reason for uh, running less or no seal are cards like um, the Elysian Champion or the the uh, the Stone Scar Champion units that require three plus affinity for their influences or um, decks that, for example, maybe have like medium costed. Uh, cards that have two to three influence in both of their factions, um, then seal can be uh, can be problematic because, for example, imagine you sit on like two influence each, and you have these two uh, triple influence uh, cost card in your hand for like turn four, turn five, probably turn five. I think I'm not even sure if there's any triple influence cards on four or five, but anyway. Um, then you draw a diplomatic seal instead of like a power that actually gains your influence and cripples your ability to play this, uh, the cards. Um, but yeah, normally this is just makes your opening hand so much better because um, it makes it so much more likely that you can uh, play all of your cards early on. And yeah, since in this game you only get one redraw, the second hand is final. So you want to maximize the chance of one or both of these hands to be capable of playing your stuff. So Diplomatic Seal is a must play in most decks. And people just underplay that card way too much in my opinion. In every deck that I saw, it, this is a must play as a 4 of. It basically never came back to bite me. And this is a perfect example. I've seen so many lists of this deck with zero Diplomatic Seal. It's not even funny. And yeah. You have the eight dual lands, easy inclusion. I recently cut the twenty fifth uh, power, like the seventh shadow sigil, for an amethyst monument. Uh, when I added the maidens, because uh, I occasionally flood it out a bit, and getting an extra body instead is pretty nice. The deck has a lot of um, like kind of curve holes where it has a spare power where uh, this coming into play depleted doesn't hurt too much. And the lifesteal can be pretty nice at stabilizing in the late game, and it has nice synergy with the cudgels from the maiden, turning this into like a 5-5 five, five or 7-7 seven, seven lifesteal can easily uh, pull the game out of reach for the opponent. Not 100% sure if it's correct yet, I'm still testing it, but so far it has been decent and as like a, like a spell, like a unit, and not terrible as a power source so far, so currently I feel like it's a solid addition. And yeah, it's not a great monument, but we are in the color and uh, the faction combination with the two worst monuments, and the 4 1 charge is definitely way worse because it's only good against control and it's another like vanquish target and just doesn't really add anything. The life steal actually uh, adds some of the life gain back that we lost by cutting Reaper, so. That's not too bad. All right, that's the deck list. I think I've said everything that there is to say about the deck. I've I am very very impressed by the deck. The deck is super flexible, very powerful, has a lot of grind potential, can uh, answer almost everything, and uh, can overpower uh, most decks eventually. And that's why I uh, started like building and playing it because it just felt like it might might be the best deck in the format if I find the right build because I've been so impressed by like the untuned versions that I played against 
um, that I felt like if you max the potential of this strategy and this archetype, then this could easily be like a very powerful, if not the most powerful deck in the game currently. And so far, um, aside from some uh, occasional consistency problems, as you usually have with synergy-driven decks like this, um, I mostly um, feel like um, confirmed in in that assumption because the deck has been performing really great. Like I said, I went up from like 99 back to like 18th place currently, and the deck just keeps crushing most games. Alright, so um, that's it for the deck. Gonna see you in a moment with part one of the uh, games as last time.